Hello and welcome back to the series on Python and Named Entity Recognition, or NER, for the purposes of the digital humanities. Now, in the last video, I showed you how to use the topic modeling library Gensum to generate word vectors. In this video, I'm going to show you how to take the word vectors that we generated via Gensum from the last video and inject them into a blank spacey model that we will then train in the next video. So let's go ahead and talk about the ways in which you can do this. There are two different major ways. The first way is to do a command line series of instructions, with, which is fairly easy but difficult to automate. The other option, and I'm going to show you both in this video, is to uh, create a function within Python and use the um, the Python library's subprocess and uh, system to actually interact with uh your actual file structure at, via Python and run executable commands automatically in a Python script. There's advantages and disadvantages to both, and I'll be talking about them through this video. The main advantage of using a command line is that it's quick and easy. The advantage of using a Python script is that it allows for you to automate the training process if you're testing multiple models. So let's go ahead and show you how to do it via the command line first. So what you need to do is you need to open up your Explorer, if you're using Windows, and in your directory where all of your folders are, we see this is my directory for this NER uh, video tutorial series, and I've got this model here that we're going to be recreating. Uh, this is me just testing everything out. Within this, however, I have word vectors as a folder, and then within that folder, I have the word vectors that we trained in the last video, which are right here. So it's the uh, word to vec underscore HP underscore NER underscore model underscore O3 dot TXT. As you might imagine, I don't want to type all that out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click right there, and I'm going to open up my command line right from this, um, this section of the Explorer. And what it does is it automatically puts me in the proper directory, so I don't have to use CD and navigate to it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to initiate Python. I'm going to pass in the argument of M, and I'm going to call spacey. That's going to allow for me to call the, the spacey functions in Python. Now, from this, I can pass in a few other arguments. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pass in the command init model. Then I'm going to pass in the language of that blank model. In this case, we're working with English. The next thing that I'm going to do is specify the name that I want to give that model. So I'm going to call it HP, so Harry Potter, underscore, N-E-R, underscore. I'm going to call it test. Actually, I'm going to call it because this is going to eventually be a model. I'm going to call it HP, underscore, um, model test. So with that, I can now tell it what the name of the model it will be. And I'm going to actually apologize one more time, just call it that. So what I'm also going to tell it is the position of the vectors. I'm going to pass dash dash vectors dash one dash there lock and space. And then I'm going to tell it where those word vectors are. So they are in the folder word vectors. And actually, we we're already in the the folder word vectors, I need to, I'll just load it there. Why not? So all I have to do is tell it what the word vectors text file is called, expand that out a little bit and add a dot txt and run this. And it's going to automatically, you see it running right now, going into that word vector and it's already created a blank model. In fact, this is not what I intended to do, but you'll see on my atom, it's loaded right there. And you'll see also when I open up um, the actual folder again, I go into word vectors, you see my HP underscore uh, model underscore test is now loaded into word vectors. I'm going to delete that one. And now I'm going to show you how to do that exact same process and automate it in a Python script. And if you missed this command line, I'm going to leave it in the description down below. I'm also going to provide a link to you on where this is finally, this is located in the spacey documentation because it can be a little difficult to find. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to start writing a Python script to achieve that same thing. And like I said, the advantages of doing this in a Python script is that you can automate the process by creating a function that you can use multiple times. 
So let's go ahead and import the libraries that we need. We're going to be using Spacey. So we want to import Spacey. We're going to import sub process and we're going to import uh, SYS. Sub processes and system allow for you to open up the command line and run executables in it. And I'd like to thank Mike for helping me figure this little bit of code out because it was a little tricky. I'm not going to use any last names, but you know who you are. So we're going to say load word underscore vectors. This is the function that we're making. So we're going to pass in two things to this function. We're going to pass in a model name. And we're going to pass in the word vectors. These are the things that are going to change every time you run this function. So it's good to have them as arguments. And outside of the function, we are just going to store these. So we're going to say model name is going to be equal to HP underscore uh, model underscore test. And our word vectors, this is going to be where the text file is, are going to be located in word underscore vectors uh, back uh, backslash word to vec, uh, all that stuff I just shared with you before, uh, word to vec underscore HP underscore NER underscore model underscore O3 uh, dot TXT. Now it comes time to actually run this. And this function is only going to run one line of code. It's going to be sub process dot run. That's going to allow us to actually open up this function and pass in a, uh, a list. And the list is going to be the series of executable commands. This is very important that you get this correct. The first item in the list is going to be sys.executable. Next, keep this list open. It's very important. Keep the list open. And by, in case you don't know this, in Python, you can um, simply uh, keep on nesting things within a list on different lines. And that allows for you to read the code a little bit better. All we're going to pass now is each individual strings in this list are going to be the different items that we saw in the command line. So if you notice, we had uh, dash M from here on, because we're already in Python. Uh, it's going to be dash M space, spacey, space, init model, so etc. So all those things are going to be passed as individual strings because they're parts of the command. So dash M, and then we're going to pass in spacey. So it's going to load up spacey for us. Then we're going to do init model. So we're passing our first argument right there. We're telling it to run the init model command. We're going to say en because it's the English language. So it's going to load a blank English model. Next, we're going to pass in model name. Now, this is an object, but it's an object that is corresponding to this string. Next, we're going to pass in the command uh, dash dash vectors dot lock. So vector location. And then next, we're going to pass in the word vectors. And that's going to be our whole function. We don't have to return anything because it's doing something. So we're going to pass or we're going to call that function. We're going to pass for right now these two arguments, model name and word vectors. So we're basically just going to take these objects and pass them into these parameters that have the same name. They don't have to be the same name. That's just what I do. And I think that's a fairly Pythonic practice. So when we run this, you'll see all the same stuff coming out in the atom um, uh, shell or terminal right here. Output, it's already done. All the same stuff that you saw in the, uh, the spacey command line is now being done all within a script. So why is this useful? Like I said, this means that you can automate the injection of word, uh, word vectors, or word embeddings into a blank spacey model. Why is this also important? Well, when spacey takes the word vectors, it doesn't just load in the exact same word vectors. Were we to open it up right now, so the HP underscore uh, model underscore test, we see we have the exact same setup. However, if I open up the vectors, they look different now. We can see they still have the same shape, the 18,123 by 500 dimensions, but it is now in this uh, kind of difficult to read uh, vector description. This is because it's not the TXT vectors that we see in that's output it from the Jensen model. Why is this important? Well, let's take a look at this and just demonstrate this very briefly. Were I to look at the size, we see that from the word vectors from the Jensen model are 103 megabytes. So that's 18,000 words with 500 dimensions. That's how much they take up in a text file. What Spacey does, however, is it compresses them. And that allows for us to go in and look at our HP underscore model underscore test and look at these word vectors. And you'll see that it's 35 megabytes. So it reduces it by 75. So roughly it gets it to about 30% in that compression. 
that's very good because it means that your spacey model, the majority of which the majority of the space in the spacey model for the NER is going to come from these word vectors. By compressing them down to 35% of their original amount means that your model will be smaller, faster, and easier to deploy. That's always a good thing. If you can achieve the same thing with less space, thumbs up. That's going to be it for this video, though. Now that we've got this custom blank model with these vectors injected, in the next video, we're going to take that model and start redoing a lot of the stuff that we did in the previous videos and training a brand new model from scratch. That's going to be it for this video, though. Thank you for listening, and if you've liked it, please like and subscribe down below.